Hi, and welcome back to Ion Harness Racing. I'm John Pavlock. The 2012 Grand Circuit Meet at Lexington's Red Mile built to a big finish this past Saturday and Sunday and in the process provided some insight into the various races for this year's Dan Patch Awards. The $508,000 Kentucky Futurity for sophomore trotters was the feature on closing day. Archangel was a wire-to-wire 153-1 -wire winner in his first elimination heat and my MVP captured the other elimination in 152. That set up a second heat in which Archangel grabbed the early lead, but saw my MVP come first over at the three quarters and then pass the leader on the way to a sweep with the deciding mile timed in 1.53. Money on my mind, another Amaretto Black, Appomattox on the outside, my MVP is almost there, my MVP and Mike LeChance win the Kentucky Fraternity. You changed definitely helped him you know like I said to you earlier when uh, when we raced him in the the overnight last week um, I didn't want to pull his back shoes off because I knew that if he had to go two heats today I'd be pressing my luck to go without any shoes three races in, in seven days so I left his back shoes on and I knew that affected his performance and I knew that I'd be that much better coming into the fraternity which was you know what we were shooting for not the late closer well, Tony Alanya Mr. Chicago and then Maytime Terror we got Modern Family coming up next but nothing could be better than the future it's a great time at the Red Mile. I'm forever indebted to George Siegel and Brittany Farms and Myron Bell and Tony Oanya and of course Mike Lachance today doing what he did for us. So it's been great over the last four or five years. You know, we've had Tell All and Mr. Feel Good, and this is really a great finale. First, uh, first time on the first trip there when I went on a, on a track with him, he had his ears straight up and he was right on the bit. And usually, he's, you know, he's always looked loose line, and but he had. He had a good day today, and he was just, uh, that was his day. There was also a sweep in the $287,000 Philly Kentucky Futurity for sophomore trotting fillies. After Oasis Dream won her elimination heat in 153-4, and four, Win Missy B won hers in 152, upsetting the heavily favored Check Me Out. Check Me Out chased along on the outside. Bluff is angling personal style on the outside. Win Missy B is dead game. Check Me Out is full out on the outside in second. Win Missy B trying to hold on for the upset. At the line, it's Win Missy B. Here in what proved to be the final heat, Oasis Dream proved to be no factor, and Check Me Out was scratched which left Win Missy B and driver Ron Pierce to grab an early lead and speed to a 152-1 victory. Pierce trying to highline her home. Up on the outside, personal style. Dorsey hanging in there. Win Missy B, personal style. It's Win Missy B to win the Philly fraternity. If you can keep her in, uh, you know, for a quarter of a mile, which, you know, she'll relax. And, you know, Ronnie did. Uh, I said, just don't let her get away from you the first 10 yards, and, you know, she'll be fine. And both trips worked out like that, and uh, very good. Another highlight on Sunday's Red Mile card was the mile posted by Chapter 7 in the Alarage Farm Trot, in which the son of Winsong's legacy looked to lower his own world record of 150 and 1 with Tim Tietrick in the bike. Chapter 7 kicking out to a three light lead. Mr. Herbie is chasing on the outside in second. Arch Madness racing third. T Drink urging on Chapter 7. Mr. Herbie is now four lengths away in second. It's Chapter 7. He's trotting down to the line in the all arrive, and Chapter 7 has won it. Well, you know, I kind of had to force my hand and go to the front, and I was kind of hoping to be on cover for a while, but uh, I didn't want to get away fourth or fifth and have to move, you know, four lengths, give those, you know, those good horses four lengths. So I didn't want to have to do that and lead, uh, you know, Jody's horse into it, so I have to put him on the front. He's win there before. He's, he's just a good horse. He overcomes whatever I do to him. His game isn't on the front end usually, but um, he can do it. He's a great horse. Looking for a fun and easy way to learn more about standard bread racing? Harness Night School, Thursday nights. Enjoy access and learn the game from top racing insiders via chat and video. Miss a class? Read the archive. Harness Night School, Thursday nights. Let's get rolling. This past Saturday's Red Mile card was headed by the $510,300 Tattersalls for three-year-old pacing colts, in which a bulky field of 12 went to post, and in which thinking out loud was the crowd choice. The second choice in the wagering, Sweet Lou, came first over after the half, then had to work hard to hold Hillbilly Hanover off at the wire in a 148-1 victory. Hillbilly! 
Billy Hanover looking for a shocker. It's Sweet Lou. Bill Billy Hanover on the outside. Big two. Sweet Lou. I mean, there was a lot of big races I'd like to have back, but, you know, today that's a big relief to get one under our belt and head into the Breeders' Crowns, you know, on the right foot. The last couple starts have really, he's been good. He was good in the jug. I was really happy with him. That was the first time this year in a long time that I thought he was himself. So I'm happy with him. He's strong. He'll come back, and uh, we'll move on from here. The $222,000 Glen Garnsey Memorial for three-year-old pacing fillies went in a pair of divisions. Romantic Moment won the first in 150 and three as the big favorite, and then the second saw the one to two choice American Jewel fall by a narrow margin to Economy Terror, who posted the faster mile, 150. And Shell Escape is charging hard for Campbell on the outside. American Jewel full out. Shell Escape coming. Economy Terror on the inside. Economy Terror gets through to win it. Trainer Tony Alanya has had a brilliant year and seems to have developed a sensational young pacer in the two-year-old son of some beat somewhere of Captain Treacherous. The speedy colt, according to his driver Tim Tietrick, may not have been at his absolute best but was still good enough to hold off a determined Didi's Dragon in a 150 and 3 mile. Here comes Hale, the taxi, a fresh threat for Campbell on the outside. They're driving to the finish. Captain Treacherous, D.D.'s Dragon is after him on the outside. Captain Treacherous, D.D.'s Dragon is coming at the line. Very tight! Yeah, I mean, we win 50, race good. Uh, you know, we would love to win by five, but it don't always happen. You know, we win top of this game, but he was still great. There was more than racing at the Red Mile this past week. The annual meeting of the Grand Circus saw the group elect a new leader. John Campbell, the sport's leading money-winning driver of all time, was elected president to fill the post which became vacant with the passing of Little Brown Jug's Tommy Thompson earlier this year. Campbell said that he was honored and promised that you'll hear great plans for the future of the Roaring Grand in the weeks and months to come. If the results of the five-day Lexington selected yearling sale are any indication of an improving economy, look for a rise in your 401k. The stand ended with a 5.1% increase in the average price paid for 684 yearlings. That average $35,415 was boosted by the progeny of two young sires, the Trotters by Muscle Hill and the Pacers by Some Beat Somewhere. John Cancellari was among those who invested in the sale. A rock and roll heaven's full brother. We picked up uh, Rock and Delight, uh, the Sky Full of Lighters. I mean, we, we picked some very nice pedigreed horses. We're ecstatic with them. Uh, They're I, beautiful babies. Here's a date to shoot for April 13, 2013. On that day, some astute handicappers will win $100,000 in the World Harness Handicapping Challenge announced this past week. The contest is a cooperative effort of the U.S. Trotting Association, the New Meadowlands, and Standard Bread Canada. The Meadowlands will host the next qualifying session on October 27th. Details may be found at the Meadowlands website, meadowlandsracetrack.com. The past performance page you download is pretty much like the one I download, except for one little difference. Trackmaster's past performance products are now available for download to your iPad which is handy for making notations, just as you would on a printed page, but without having to use paper and printer ink. It's innovation such as this, combined with powerful products such as Platinum Pass Performances that set TrackMaster apart from the field. Download the free iPad app at TrackMaster.com. Ready for the latest advances in handicapping technology? TrackMaster is your solution. With 20 plus years of providing a wealth of information, TrackMaster has tools for every level of player. TrackMaster Pocket Handicapper for iPhone and Android puts the power of a computer in the palm of your hand. Drill down to charts and race videos. And with software like Plus Pro, even the most advanced players have sophisticated tools to succeed. The complete source for thoroughbred, quarter horse, and harness racing information. TrackMaster by Equibase for the serious player. Over the years, some of Harness Racing's greatest horses have been retired to the Kentucky Horse Park's Hall of Champions. One the West took up residence at the Hall, where he will be spending his days making friends for standard bred horses and the sport of harness racing, one-on-one -on -one with the thousands who visit the park each year. What are you feeling right now just to watch One the West come out? Races? Yeah. <laughs> we are doing this show. I'm happy for him. Like, he's happy here. We came the other day. It's hard to get him to pick his head up out of the hay pile. Like, he's just, he's happy here. So, that's good. 
Well, he's clearly one of the great pacers of, of, of all time, and um, certainly uh, if any horse was ever worthy to be at the Hall of Champions at the Kentucky Horse Park, it's, it's won the West. And it's interesting to remember that the, before this land was the Kentucky Horse Park, it was Walnut Hall Stud, and one of the great standard bred farms in, in all of history. So I think it's particularly appropriate that, that we've had so many great standard breds here, uh, and One the West is now the, the latest of that uh, uh, great group. That's it for this week. Next week, we'll preview the Breeders' Crown eliminations at Woodbine Racetrack when we next focus our eye on harness racing.